Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are discussing about CSF examination. CSF is cerebrospinal fluid. Let's learn the importance of CSF in human body. The total volume of CSF in adult is approximately 140 ml. CSF is produced at a rate of 0.2 to 0.7 ml per minute or 500 to 700 ml per day. The main function of CSF is to reduce buoyancy of brain. It also supplies nutrient as well as it helps in removal of various substances like amino acid, neurotransmitter, metabolic byproducts and cells. Indications of CSF examination is mainly diagnostic. It is useful in diagnosing CNS infections like meningitis or meningoencephalitis. In autoimmune CNS diseases like Guillain-Barre syndrome, CNS vasculitis, CT negative subarachnoid hemorrhage, in brain and spinal cord neoplasm, and it is useful in finding malignant cells in metastasis. Now let's learn the CSF examination. It is divided into the five parts collection, gross examination, biochemistry, microscopical examination, and microbiological examination. Let's learn the collection. It is done by lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture can be performed either in lateral or sitting posture. It is usually under sterile precautions. 20 to 24 gauge spinal needle is inserted after identifying the lumbar L2, L3 or L3, L4 space and local anesthetic infiltration. Once the spinal subarachnoid space is identified using loss of resistance, the control removal of stylet is done to prevent excessive drainage of CSF. A manometer can be connected if CSF opening pressure measurement is planned. Samples are usually collected in 3 to 4 test tube, each containing 1 to 2 ml of CSF for analysis. This is how the testing can be performed after collection of 4 test tube. The first test tube which is collected it is used for chemistry and serology. Second test tube which is collected it is used for microbiology test. Third is used for cell counting and fourth is used for cytology accordingly. Specimens must be sent to lab and analyzed immediately within one to two hours as the cells in CSF deteriorate rapidly and the chemical constituents change quickly. Samples are transported to lab in biohazard bag without refrigeration. Now let's understand gross examination. In gross, we should check for color, transparency, hemorrhage, clot and cobweb formation. Normal CSF is usually clear and colorless like water. CSF turbidity may be caused by increase in cell count like WBC, leukocytes, erythrocyte, bacteria, fungi and parasites. Turbidity may be caused by contrast media or aspiration of epidural fat during lumbar puncture. A blood stained CSF is a pink red in appearance and may be grossly bloody when RBC count is more than 6000 per microliter. When blood is present in CSF specimen, it is necessary to determine whether it is due to traumatic lumbar puncture or it is a true intracranial bleed. A traumatic lumbar puncture may be indicated by CSF clearing, which is decrease in RBC count between first and fourth cube and clear supernatant on centrifugation. The xanthochromia it is pale pink to orange discoloration of CSF from RBC lysis and hemoglobin breakdown is indicative of intracranial bleed. The xanthochromia is detected by centrifuging the CSF sample and visually examining the color of supernatant in most labs. 
to detect xanthochromia supernatant fluid should be compared with distilled water. A cobweb developed due to very high protein in CSF and it is associated with tuberculosis infection. Now let's learn about the biochemistry testing of CSF. The different tests performed are protein, glucose, chloride and CSF IgG. CSF glucose is 50 to 60 percent of serum glucose. CSF glucose is markedly reduced in bacterial meningitis and it is elevated in diabetic coma. The CSF protein levels are usually elevated in patients with bacterial meningitis and to lesser degree in viral meningitis along with increased cell count. Increased CSF protein and increased cell count is also seen in subarachnoid hemorrhage, CNS vasculitis and CNS neoplasm. Elevated CSF protein with normal cell counts which is referred as albuminocytologic dissociation is found in acute and chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathies such as gullian bad syndrome. Low concentration of immunoglobulins are normally present in CSF mainly it is IgG. Quantification of CSF immunoglobulins is performed in cases of multiple sclerosis. CSF IgG index is appropriate test to detect intrathecal synthesis of IgG. Other tests available are detection of oligoclonal band in CSF electrophoresis, quantification of IgG and quantification of light chains in CSF. This table compares bacterial tuberculosis, viral, fungal and aseptic pathology and it gives approximate CSF parameter value in each. Now let's learn the microscopic examination of CSF. It is done by counting of leukocyte and RBC in uncentrifuge specimen. It is performed with the help of newbar chamber or automatically in hematology analyzer. Newbar chamber is counting chamber and this is the view under the microscope. The central region of counting grid is important for cell count. There are 4 corner square each containing 16 small squares which is used for WBC counting in blood, fluid and CSF. The central one square containing small 25 squares is used for RBC count. Each 9 square measures 1 mm and depth is 0.1 mm. These measurements are useful in calculating cells in new birth chamber. Now let's see the method of counting. First, gently mix the CSF sample. Charge one side of new birth chamber with sample without any dilution. Charge other side of newbar chamber with appropriate dilution with CSF diluting fluid. Let it stand for 5 minutes and observe under the microscope. Count the number of WBCs and RBCs. Repeat the same process twice and take the average number of WBC and RBC. The formula for counting cells is Cells or particle per microliter of fluid volume is equal to counted particles into dilution factor upon counted surface into chamber depth. For example, if we have count the 10 cells in 4 large outside corners, then it is 10, then counted surface is 4 into 1, chamber depth is 0.1 and dilution is 1 is to 2, then formula is 10 into 2 upon 4 into 0 0.1 which is 10 into 5 is equal to 50. So total cells is 50 per microliter of CSF. Differential count. First centrifuge the sample at 2000 rpm for 1 minute. If RBCs are more then add little acetic acid before centrifugation to lyse RBCs. After centrifugation from sediment, 
the smear is formed and stained appropriately with Leishman stains. The smear is observed under the microscope. Cells seen in CLF may be divided into four categories. Mature peripheral blood cells, immature hematopoietic cells, tissue cells and malignant cells. A CSF leukocyte count 0 to 5 cells per microliter is normal and it excludes CNS infection. Typically, acute bacterial infections have increased leukocyte count from 100 to 10,000 cells per microliter with predominant polymorphonuclear cells with increased CSF protein and decreased CSF glucose. In contrast, CSF WBC count in viral meningitis is less than 800 per microliter with lymphocytic predominance and CSF glucose levels are slightly decreased or normal. The presence of more than 10 per microliter eosinophil is seen in parasitic infections and coccidiomycosis. Now let's understand microbiological examination. In this, the microscopic examination include gram or methylene blue for bacteria and specific stain such as oramin O or zelnilson for mycobacterium tuberculosis and in clinically indicated example in immunosuppressed patient the India ink stain for cryptococcus species. A PCR testing can be useful for TB meningitis. A bacterial and fungal cultures are indicated based on clinical presentation and anaerobic cultures performed only when there is suspicion of brain abscess. Other tests which are done from CSF are CSF lactate. The lactate is produced from anaerobic glycolysis in various central nervous system conditions lead to rise in CSF lactate including acute neurological infection, stroke, seizures and mitochondrial pathologies. CSF ADA It is specific for tuberculous etiology. CSF cryptococcal antigen It is used to diagnose cryptococcal infection. CSF VDRL and CSF TPHA. The TPHA CSF dilution cutoff is more than 1 is to 640. This dilution has a high diagnostic specificity in diagnosing neurosyphilis and it is also useful in monitoring response to treatment in syphilis infection. We consider as serological cure in syphilis if a four-fold decline in initial TPHA titers occurs within 12 months after th therapy. Normal composition of CSF is described below. So this is in short about CSF examination and these are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next video.